Hey, this is Jeremy Wallace, Microsoft Certified Azure Solutions Architect Expert and Senior Cloud Infrastructure Engineer for Safari Micro. Today, I wanted to talk to you about the hub and spoke model in Azure Virtual Networking. Uh, taking a look at my diagram here, we have a hub virtual network uh, and some spoke VNets. Uh, the hub is just where your uh, your central line of virtual network communication is going to come in here. Typically, you have a firewall of some appliance of some sort in here, although you can put a Windows server uh, that is uh, routing and remote access and can uh, control that that networking through the Windows platform. Uh, but other options are Sophos Firewall. That's a popular one that we've seen. Uh, when you use a, a Sophos Firewall virtual appliance, uh, you'll typically build out an internal uh, subnet and external subnet. Uh, and then that virtual uh, machine is going to have a NIC on both of those subnets. Uh, the external NIC is going to um, be associated with the Azure public IP that you have out there. And there's going to be some natting that occurs between those two. Uh, but everything comes in until that external NIC passes through all the firewall sets that you have configured in there uh, and then comes in through the internal NIC. And so in this model, um, through Azure peering is how the, the native communication happens between these, uh, these virtual networks. So you can peer any two uh, virtual networks together. In fact, you can peer a lot more than two. You can peer all of your virtual networks so that they're talking to each other. So uh, technically in this, I could have VNet2 communicate directly with VNet3 through an Azure peering, but that's not the model that we're going with today. It is a hub and spoke model for a reason. So these are spoke networks that are peered with the hub VNet. And so that magic uh, Azure virtual networking happens. So the, the routing uh, for the address space that's in VNet2 and in, uh, in the hub VNet, uh, it knows exactly where to send that traffic without you having to design any type of custom route tables or or anything like that. Uh, so uh, we have that peering. Um, I'll show you briefly in the Azure portal here. So I have a, a hub VNet. I have it peered with VNet2 and VNet3. Uh, and so this um, controls the traffic. So I'm allowing remote access virtual network traffic. I'm allowing um, some, some forwarding uh, VNets as well. So if I look at VNet2, I can see that pairing with the hub. Uh, so that pairing is what allows that native traffic to, to happen uh, between those two VNets. Uh, so now how do we get traffic to go from VNet2 to VNet3? Say I have an ad, uh, say I have a virtual machine that's in VNet2 that needs to talk to VNet3. Well, we accomplish that with something called custom route tables. Uh, so that's what uh, this icon here designates is a, a, a route table. Uh, so if I look um, in the Azure portal uh, and we go to route tables, I have a route table that's created. And in this route table, I have a custom route. Uh, so I have a custom route design for VNet3. Uh, this route says that destination uh, traffic destined for this 10100, which is the IP range of uh, that um, that VNet3 uh, will go to a virtual appliance and the virtual appliance's IP address is listed here. And so this is going to be the internal IP address of uh, my firewall. So in this case, it's a Sophos firewall that I have it to. Uh, so it's saying any traffic this, destined for this I, uh, IP address range that belongs to VNet3 is gonna be sent to this internal NIC. So, when this virtual machine tries to, okay, I need to talk to the IP address of this virtual machine. That virtual machine belongs to this IP range. We have a custom route that says send that traffic over to the internal NIC. So now it's the firewall that has to deal with that traffic. So what does the firewall do? Uh, so typically we have the firewall dump that traffic uh, directly into this subnet. So instead of telling it where to go to send it to so, some other type of appliance, we don't have another appliance in this virtual network. We want it to go over the VNet peering. So how do we accomplish that? We tell it to dump the traffic into the virtual network itself. And then the virtual network will handle sending that traffic over the peering. Uh, so that, that traffic gets dumped here, travels over the peering. The, the hub VNet knows, hey, I'm peered with VNet3. I know exactly uh, where that ad, uh, where that traffic should go. Sends it over to the peer. The traffic gets to that virtual machine in VNet3. But v, uh, the virtual machine in VNet3 needs to be able to respond to the traffic uh, to that uh, to the, the virtual machine in VNet2. So how does it do that? Also with a custom route table. So we 
and like have um, a, a route table uh, that also has the traffic defined for uh, VNet2. And so it has the IP range of VNet2, and it says, hey, send that traffic back to the firewall, the internal NIC of the firewall. So uh, now in order to respond, it knows, okay, I need to send that traffic to the uh, internal NIC of the firewall. I know how to get there because of the Azure peering, sends that traffic back, uh, and it follows in like kind. It dumps that traffic into the internal subnet, which travels over to the peering and returns to uh, the virtual machine that's in VNet2. Uh, so that's in a nutshell, what happens in a hub and spoke model, this is repeatable for as many virtual networks. And so you can have uh, several virtual networks for different purposes. In a hub and spoke mo model, they are isolated from one another, except for what you define specifically in the custom route table. So if you want, for instance, in this uh, diagram, VNet1 and VNet4 never to talk to each other, uh, you just don't define them in the virtual networking. You don't define uh, uh, th those traffic routes to each other. So uh, it doesn't know how to to reach that, that VNet that's not peered with it, and it doesn't know to send that traffic to the firewall. Um, that traffic's just dead in the water. And so those virtual networks can remain completely isolated from each other, but they can maybe both get to VNet too. Say you had a shared resource in them. So it, you can use it as part of your uh, cloud security model in, in order to isolate specific networks. This is very handy in uh, PCI compliance scenarios where where you have sensitive data in, in some of your, your virtual networks, and but you have uh, other workloads that doesn't need to be within that PCI scope. And so you need them isolated in their own environments, but maybe they have uh, shared resources. And so uh, I'll probably cover that in a different video of how to achieve um, certain compliance standards in Azure, uh, but here's a, a good place to start in a hub and spoke model. Uh, again, follow me for more videos. I'll see you next time.